<laughs> this is awesome. Right now, a few hundred thousand pounds of concrete just right here. And then later, we're going to add 125,000 gallons of water. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. All right, guys, I am super excited. I just got off work and I've got my daughter Ashlyn here helping me do one of the funnest parts of this project. And it's really fun because it's a little bit of demolition, but more than that is that I'm actually ripping out all the walls underneath the pool. We've already removed almost all the studs that went down this every one foot on center that was holding the arc in the spandex concrete ceiling above me while I poured the concrete on top of that. I wanted that concrete on top to actually cure in the same arc that the spandex starts with. So the, the two, when I pull the wall out, settle together and the upper slab helps hold the weight as well as the lower slab. If you don't do that, you can actually just pour wet concrete on top of the spandex. The spandex would begin its heavy flex with the top just being wet. Then when it dried, the top would have no preload on it and all of the weight of the upper floor would be carried solely on the spandex, which was flexed. So now that I've put this wall up, we've finished pouring, we let it sit for a couple of weeks, everything's been baked and cured. I can actually now pull this wall out and any flex that occurs is the top slab and the bottom slab begin their flex together and they're stronger that way. So I pull most of these studs out and I've been trying to measure how much deflection I'm getting in that. I expected to see close to a quarter inch. And I'm at the point where a lot of locations, I can't measure the difference. It's almost the thickness of the tape measure black line. It's such minor movement. So I knew we went way overkill on this. We went to a 12 inch spandex instead of an eight. We did. Uh, extra tensile cables in it for the point loads. We did solid areas, some of it hollow core, some solid. Um, but you know what? We did everything we could to make it not move and it's not moving. It is designed to flex if it needs to. The truck loads and truck loads of concrete on top of here and the way the spandex is all resting on the rounded wall of the pool spanning from this giant concrete column that goes clear down another story below grade. This concrete column, there's another one there and another one at the end. So there's four massive concrete columns going all the way down to the super footing that's two feet thick. And the span, clear span, is from this point to that point that is holding 100% of the pool decking above. We're gonna rip this down. As long as it doesn't collapse on us, we'll try putting water in it soon. So, <laughs> you guys know the drill. Back to work! <laughs> It's been a long time coming. We've got the upper concrete poured. You can see how thick the concrete is now. We're about ready to pull out the wall from underneath it, which is when we find out if the engineering worked as well as we planned. And I already know because I just pulled the plastic off. And while I was pulling the plastic off, I noticed the bottom of the wall is moving. It's floating already, which means that the temporary floor bracing, I had solid aluminum beams everywhere with stilts under here. And when I put them on, they have jack screws. You can just twist them. And I just spun them till they touched and just put about two pounds of pressure on them to just snug them. And that lifted this wall up enough 
that we poured the concrete and we pulled the frame out from underneath, this wall was actually suspended. So that concrete's already holding its own weight. I'm ripping down these walls and that concrete isn't gonna move or that would be planted. I'm so excited, it's a good day. It's been so long to get to here. All this wood I get to reuse. I've been waiting on finishing a big section of the basement so I can reuse every single one of these. So I'm gonna cut them out real nice, pry them off. They'll become basement walls. They'll become part of the pavilion in the backyard. And if you spin around over here, as I poured the concrete on the top of this wall, I'm pouring the concrete the same around that entire fence so I don't have to weed eat against the fence. I want a big wide base. So I'll also use the timber around my other house here that I bought while I built this one. So um, I'm super excited. This wall is coming down. You know the drill. Back to work. guys we are halfway done insulating the swimming pool to my house we started first by putting in a closed cell foam there's open and closed cell foams out there the closed cell keeps the moisture from passing through it and it's soaking up water so the reason i went ahead and did both rather than just one is i wanted to get the closed cell it's a lot more money just to do this pool it's about five grand in just the material I wanted to put that on the concrete of the pool because concrete eventually can wick a tiny bit of moisture out of it, especially if I don't get a good seal. Now, I intend to make my pool have absolutely no problems and have no wicking through, but just in case, we got a closed cell foam sprayed right to the concrete. Then I'm putting on this netting and we're blowing it with standard insulation. I'm going one step beyond that because I want this pool running 365 days a year when it's 10 below zero. And so I want to get really good insulation, so I'm doing a third layer. One, blow in two. The third will be I'll wrap this with wood. Then I'm going to go ahead and put a foam board insulation on top of that. Then we'll stucco on top of that. So we're going close cell, blow in, wood, foam board, stucco and we're layering it out. This pool is also insulated all the way down where it goes 13 feet below us right here, all the way to the top, the sides. And at the end of the day, this will cost less to heat than a traditional pool, a small pool with one fifth the amount of water in it. It's because typically a pool is concrete directly connected to the soil. You dig a hole, rebar, pour concrete, to the soil and if the ground is 65 degrees which is pretty typical below frost line that 65 degrees is cooling your pool in the middle of summer all of the time especially if you're going to run it in the winter this pool doesn't have that because i have separated the concrete from the earth with insulation concrete only has an r value of one which is essentially zero solid mass to a soil it just sucks all your heat out. So the goal was to have a pool I could use all year. I think I'm getting there, three layers deep. We have a lot more to do. You know the drill. Back to work. Okay guys, arts and crafts time. Today, I want to close out some posts. Typically, these two panels are squishing a concrete panel that's going between, but since I wanted to see through to the river, which <laughs> right now is a mud river. We're expecting the largest flood in Utah's recorded history. We are hundreds of inches above the snowpack line of the giant flood from 1983, 1984. So it's gonna be front row and center view of this water coming all the way up and potentially over onto the jogging trail up against our block wall. So kind of excited to watch that and also sandbag all my neighbors. But Right now we got mud flowing down from the river. A few weeks from now, it's gonna get crazy because it's potentially gonna go to 300% of that flow. 
So um, today, what we're going to do is I want to be able to see through to the massive flood. So this will be a wrought iron looking fence I can see through. But since these are usually squishing a concrete panel, like I did on the side over there, this would usually be closed. So I needed to create a way to fill this. Now, the company who makes this, they did a great job. I love this product. They have a filler that you can put in there, but with the electrical conduits, it's a tight fit and everything kind of pushes out and there's bigger gaps. And I wanted a fit that didn't look like I put a filler and grouted it in. I wanted it to kind of look more like one part rather than filler, grout, and then fill in behind. So I'm gonna try something with Arts and Crafts with a few cheap things from the same place I get parts for building aircrafts, hardware store, Walmart, <laughs> anywhere. I've got aluminum foil. I'm gonna wrinkle it up, stick it around the post so that I have a texture that kind of mirrors the little bit of a rock grain to it. But if I just did that, it would look perfectly smooth on this side and wouldn't have these kind of indented grout looking joints. So I will, after wrapping with foil, I'll take this foam rod and I'll wrap it around so that it makes a crease in here on the foil. So foil, wrinkled foil makes a texture. This will make and mimic a concrete grout. Then I will go ahead and wrap it with plastic wrap, like box packaging wrap, really tight. That will hold everything together. After I do that, I'm gonna use this camper seal. I'm gonna put it right down this edge over top of the foil wrap. What that's for, since these panels have that stone look, it's kind of wavy. If I didn't use this, and then I clamp the wood on it, like you see on the post behind me, if I didn't use this, the concrete would just push and then sneak out into these areas, and you just have this film running concrete. It looks horrible. So this pad is to run down this side and this side right against that seam. And then we're gonna put a board on it, two by eight, ratchet strap it tight to pinch everything together, pinch the foam pad, pinch the foam rod into these joint lines right here and kind of give it all one look. Hopefully it works well. I've never done this before. The guys who install some of these fence, I went and talked to them installing down a, another fence down the way. They usually just kind of fill the top little ledge uh, after the concrete panels are in. And they just, it just looked like a foundation concrete aggregate. It looks great, it's fine, but I kind of wanted to try and add stone texture. And I said, gosh, why don't you wrinkle up foil and add this rod and some pad and strap it and make a, a whole panel all one integral pour rather than inserting pieces that you just bolt together. And they looked at me like I was a little crazy. <laughs> so I said, well, I'm gonna give it a shot. And they said, you know what, if it works, we may be doing this on the rest of our posts and fence. So um, I don't know, I'm the guinea pig. Let's get to work. <laughs> All right, we just uncovered all the tin foil and wrap and the foam backer rod that we put in this wall to try and create a matching concrete stone look as this on these edges. And um, honestly, I couldn't be happier. It, it was a, just an idea and we just kind of crossed our fingers and went for it. But you can see how the wrinkles of the tin foil put a stone texture in it. And then, oddly enough, the foam back rod, I just guessed on the size, it looks exactly the same passing through. So we got lucky on it. I couldn't be happier. The only thing I wish was a slight bit better is I tried to get the closest concrete color match I could in the concrete, but different bash plants, and oftentimes they come out different. That's as close as I could get. So I'm gonna try just dusting this with a little bit of matte primer and see if I can kind of get some of these lines out of it. I like it, that works. Then between these, we get the black start contrast wrought iron going between all these posts. So that'll do, back to work.
Here's my stairs. Got 14 number seven bars in the middle, double mat. Then it steps to number fours on the outer perimeter. The main beam is the center. <laughs> this set of stairs is not going anywhere. You can see these little top bridges are set at every single stair tread. You can kind of see the shape on the side of the wall there. So every one of these little pop-up rebars you see, little number fours, go right across the edge of the step, two inches down, two inches back to protect the edge of the step. But more in this particular circumstance to tie the hot pipes to for my radiant heat so that I never have to shovel snow off my stairs and it puts the hot pipe right at the front top corner of every step going down my spiral stairs. Those are the stairs we're going to pour and rip off all the wood and let that stairway float. All right, guys, stairs are done. We normally would pull off and go ahead and finish the face of these stairs. We all agreed that there was a lot of risk, especially with a set of stairs. It's not easy to redo all this rebar. We went ahead and finished the tops. Looks great. I'll leave these wood face plates on probably until I'm done with construction. Help protect this front edge that people tend to break during a construction job. So I'll leave all of it on to protect the stairs. Then all of this wood on the side, everything you see here, here, Above, below, to the side, and underneath, we strip off, and all these concrete stairs will be floating up to that landing that sits on a post that goes down two stories, down to the same footing as the entire pool and garage, one monolithic pour, and then goes all the way up to the top that lands on the pool deck. So, what a day! Turned out great, I'm super excited. Can't wait to strip all this wood, rip it all off, see these concrete stairs floating, we're not in any hurry to do that. I'm going to let this cure up for a couple weeks and then we'll strip the forms.